Hello, my name is Darcy, and this is my YouTube channel, Fostering Cats. Today I'm going to talk about what the best treatment for feline ringworm is. Every time I come across a post about feline ringworm in a group, I see people start to recommend some really bad treatments for feline ringworm. Some of the worst that I've seen include bleach, hypochlorous acid, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, vagicil, collodial silver, A&D diaper ointment, new stock pierces all-purpose horse ointment, and a number of others. The issue I have with these treatments is there are no studies that show that they are effective against feline ringworm or how effective they are against feline ringworm. And the best way to illustrate that issue is to show you a 2016 study. Now this study was done by Simona Nardoni in Italy with a few other people and the goal was to compare an essential oil shampoo proven to be effective against microsperm canis, which is the most common type of feline ringworm, to myconazole chlorhexidine shampoo, which is an approved treatment for feline ringworm. Now, all the cats in the study were also given oral medication. It was a relatively small study of only 14 cats, but what they discovered was the median time to cure for the myconazole shampoo was 12.8 weeks. For the essential oil shampoo, it was 15 weeks. That's 15 days longer. However, in the extract of the study published online, it stated, there was no significant difference between the number of weeks to obtain mycological cure for cats treated with essential oils, shampoo, and animals treated conventionally. No significant difference? 15 days, two weeks, four baths. That's significant difference when you're treating a cat with ringworm. But they go on to state, the treatment appeared to be effective and well appreciated by the owners. Now, just the owners probably appreciate it because they didn't realize they had to bathe their cat two more weeks. The use of the shampoo would be an interesting natural alternative to conventional topical treatment. Interesting? I guess, yeah, it's interesting to bathe a cat for weeks longer. But more importantly, the median time for the study, which is 90 to 108 days for both the myconazole and the essential oil shampoo, is two to three months longer than the most effective treatment studied. Two to three months longer. So I know what you're wondering, what is this magical treatment for feline ringworm? Well, before I can tell you, I need to give you my disclaimer. I'm not a veterinarian. This is not veterinary advice. While I am knowledgeable about ringworm, ringworm rarely occurs in healthy cats. It's crucial that you work with a veterinarian because you won't be able to cure ringworm unless your cat is healthy. I have included extensive resources at the end of this video and in the video's description. These sources are either published journal articles or been verified. Don't trust me. Don't trust social media. Trust the sources. So what's the best treatment for feline ringworm? Oral medication plus lime sulfur dip twice a week with adjunct focal treatments. The average cure time for cats using only oral medication lime sulfur dip was 18 days in one study. It's a 2007 study of 58 cats and 23 days in a second study done in 2013 on 85 cats. But wait, that's not enough. I've got a third study that I'd like to talk about, and it was a study done in 2011 by Dr. Sandra Newberry on 90 cats. In this study, lime sulfur dip was compared to myconazole nitrate chlorhexidine gluconate rinse. So it's a rinse, not the shampoo. Cats treated with lime sulfur dip cured faster. More importantly, 40% of the cats treated with the rinse required repeat treatment because of persistent culture positive status and development of new lesions. Now, all the cats in the study were also treated with itraconazole, which is oral medication, and the same medication from the 2016 study. Now, the median cure time for the rinse was 48 days, with a range of 14 to 93 days, so significantly shorter than the 2016 study of myconazole chlorhexidine. But the median cure time for lime sulfur dip was 30 days, with a range of 10 
to 69 days. So as you can see, that is has a median cure time 18 days faster than the myconazole chlorhexidine rinse. And while I've said lime sulfur dip plus oral medication is the best treatment, it's not the only approved treatment for feline ringworm. And to be thorough, I'm gonna discuss all the options. So let's break it down. Treating feline ringworm consists of three parts. Oral medication, full body topical twice weekly, and focal topical treatments once daily. Let's talk about oral medications. There are two oral medications that are commonly used to treat ringworm. Itraconazole and terbinafine. Itraconazole should be administered at five milligrams per kilogram by mouth once daily on a week on, week off basis until mycological cure. This week on, week off basis is better known as pulse therapy. Veterinary or human pediatric liquid suspension should be used. If neither is available, 100 milligram capsules can be repackaged into 25 milligram capsules. Experimental and field studies have found this drug to be well tolerated with the most adverse side effects being vomiting and or decreased appetite. Itraconazole is safe in kittens three weeks of age, but dose carefully according to weight and change dose at regular intervals as the kittens grow. Now, if you look at this reference, you may wonder, it looks more like an anecdotal reference than a legit one, but it is published by Dr. Moriello and Dr. Newberry, who are the two leading experts on feline ringworm. According to Plum's medication guide regarding nursing or pregnant animals, itraconazole can reach high concentrations in milk and may not be safe for nursing offspring. Now, the other medication is terbinafine. Terbinafine should be administered 30 to 40 milligrams per kilogram by mouth once daily and may be administered until mycological cure. In other words, it is not given on a pulse frequency. Traditionally requires a minimum three-week course between start to finish. Many cats given terbinafine may experience GI effects. I have found Fortiflora is beneficial in reducing these issues, but I don't have any studies that back it up. That's just my opinion. It is not recommended for pregnant or nursing cats. In my experience, it's not recommended for kittens under two pounds, but I have heard some anecdotal things that might suggest otherwise, so consult with a veterinarian. Okay, now let's talk about full body topicals. Although lime sulfur dip is recommended, two other type of full body topicals exist, an alconazole, or what I refer to as the Zoll shampoos. Zoll shampoos include mycoconazole, ketoconazole, or clymazole with chlorhexidine. Of the three, myconazole plus chlorhexidine has been studied the most. Only lime sulfur dip and enalconazole have residual activity. Enalconazole is not available in the US. It is available in Canada and Europe, but only labeled for cats in France. Full body topical therapy is as important as oral medication because it kills infective spores from the hair shaft. This is important because infective material will remain on the hair shaft long after the infection has been eradicated from within the hair follicle. Lack of proper disinfection of the hair coat is the most common reason encountered in second opinion cases of failure to cure or resistant ringworm. Full body topical treatment of the hair coat should not be considered optional. Topical therapy decreases shedding of infected material, kills echothric spores on the hair coat, which are the ones that are not affected by the systematic therapy or oral medication, helps prevent development of new lesions, and decreases contagion and environmental contamination. And that is crucial because in a study, proper cleaning plus twice weekly whole body topical treatment resulted in homes being free of infected material within one week of starting treatment and remaining so throughout the study. The important thing here is if you clean properly and you treat with the cat with whole body topical twice weekly and you continue to do that, the cat will stop being contagious after a week. So now let me explain why lime sulfur dip is the best full body topical. It works immediately, and because it is left on, it has residual activity. That means it kills spores for three to four days. It also has been shown to work as a preventative for cats and kittens that remained in contact with infective animals. So in other words, if you have a litter of kittens and one kitten has ringworm, you keep them together and you dip everyone, and the kittens that don't have ringworm won't get it. Lime sulfur can be drying to the hair coat or foot pads when used for prolonged periods. I actually have never experienced this, but it is also safe to use on nursing mothers. Wipe the teats off with a wet rag before letting her nurse. You can dip neonatal kittens as a preventative. Make sure that the kittens are dry before returning them to mom and make sure you keep them warm. Now, just to clarify, kittens don't get ringworm until after they are born. 
And because it takes, you know, at least seven to 14 days before ringworms show up, you're not going to see ringworm eind kittens until they're at least three weeks, which is bare minimum. Usually it's four weeks. But if you have a litter where the mother is positive, you can dip the kittens as a preventative to keep them from getting it. Now, lime sulfur dip should be diluted on a 1 to 16 ratio. That may be different than what is on the bottle. Typically on the bottle, I think it says 4 ounces per gallon, and a 1 16 ratio is 8 ounces or 1 cup per gallon. Lime sulfur dip smells. Get over it. I don't know how to say that any better. And I know a lot of people really find it stinks. What you need to understand about the smell is it's short lasting. It dissipates really quickly. Once a cat is dry, you're not going to smell it. You only need to dip twice a week and it greatly speeds up the time to cure. So if you're able to use it, use it. Now, in some areas, lime sulfur dip is not available and you may have to look to anoconazole. Now, anoconazole is available as a 10% concentrate solution in Canada or in Europe. Um, and it is currently not available or licensed for use in the United States. So I've never had any experience with it. It should be applied twice weekly. I don't know much about it. And the studies I found that used enoconazole also used oral medications that are no longer recommended for treating ringworms. So I can't really give you any idea of how effective it is. I do know that Dr. Moriello recommends if you can't use lime sulfur dip, use enoconazole. If you don't have dip, lime sulfur dip or enoconazole, then go to the Zoll shampoos. So let's talk about the Zoll shampoos. Shampoos studied that have been proven effective include 2% myconazole nitrate with 2% chlorhexidine, or 1% ketoconazole with 2% chlorhexidine, or 0.5% clymazole with 3% chlorhexidine. Now, at the time I did this video, I couldn't find clymazole shampoos on the market, so I don't know if they stopped making them or what was going on, but I'm just including it for reference. Now, these require a 10-minute contact time when used alone, or three minutes if combined with an accelerated hydrogen peroxide rinse. Now, I am not familiar with hydrogen peroxide rinse, and I tried to find some information about it. The best I could find was that apparently some hydrogen, or maybe all hydrogen peroxide shampoos, do not need to be rinsed off as it breaks down into water and oxygen, so you just use the shampoo and don't rinse it. But that's my interpretation of what I found. Shampoo can also be used as a treatment for exposed but uninfected animals in the home, but not for cats that will continue to be exposed because there's no evidence that it, it works as a preventative. Now, just to reiterate why lime sulfur dip is better than the shampoos, because I know what's going to happen. Like People are like, oh, the shampoos don't stink, but lime sulfur dip works faster. It works as a preventative. It has residual activity. Its use dates back to Hippocrates, you know, the Hippocratic Oath, that guy. Let's talk about adding focal topical therapy. Now, this is new information. A study was done by Dr. Mariello. It's an in vitro study, which means it was done on the hairs. It wasn't actually done on living cats. And the study talked about several different things, but I'm going to talk about the three major ones, which is 1% clotrimazole, which is sold as Lotrimin AF, as well as several other um, generic brands. 1% terbinafine, sold as Lamisil AT, as well as generics. And 2% myconazole, also known as Monostat 7. Now, all three of these have shown to have residual activity for 72 hours and are effective after one treatment. Adjunct focal topical therapy applied once daily is recommended for focal lesions and or lesions in areas that are difficult to treat, like the face and the ears. This is in contrast to recommendations in most veterinary dermatology textbooks that recommend application twice daily. So what Dr. Mariello is saying is you can use these, especially on areas where it's difficult to, like around the eyes and the face where it might be difficult to get the lime sulfur dip in conjunction with the full body topical. Lesions on the face in the periocular area, which means eyes, can be treated safely with 2% myconazole nitrate vaginal cream. This product is widely used with proven safety by ophthalmologists to treat fungal keratitis. So the conclusion of the 2020 study was twice weekly application of anaconazole or lime sulfur and application of adjunct focal topical therapy daily or every other day. Understand, with, not instead of, lime sulfur dip. Now just to reiterate, 
The reason you don't want to do focal therapy or spot treatment alone is because you'll miss either the infected hairs or the spores or new spots that are beginning that you haven't noticed yet. So if you treat the whole cat, then you're getting all of the spots and you're not going to be missing spots. Okay, now I'm going to give you a few non-traditional recommendations that you can do in addition to traditional treatment. Again, these are not studied. These are just things that I have come across that I agree with. So the first one, reduce stress. We all know stress lowers the immune system and a compromised immune system means the cat's going to take longer to cure. Treat any ectoparasites like fleas and ear mites. I have this belief, and I don't have a study that proves this, but if you have fleas, your ringworm won't cure because the fleas create microabrasions and they cause itching that creates microabrasion and microabrasions cause ringworm. Sunlight or UV lamp. I've gotten like reptile UV lamps in my basement foster room because there's not any direct sunlight coming into that room. And I just feel like it works better. It, the cats like to lay under it. It doesn't do any harm. Vitamin E topically. Again, there's no studies that show this works, but hey, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt anything. Fish oil or salmon oil. There is a small study that has shown that uh, adding this to a cat's diet helps improve their immune system. I will link to that in the description. And then Fortiflora or other approved probiotics. Probiotics are also something that help improve a cat's immune system. I'm getting back on my soapbox now because I want to request that you stop recommending treatments that have not been tested. This creates more harm than good. We don't know the long-term side effects of these treatments or how effective they are. And as I've shown you, these can delay the time it takes to cure ringworm by weeks or months, promoting the perception that ringworm is always difficult to treat. Most of these treatments are spot treatments, but can result in infected hairs or small lesions being missed. But most importantly, ringworm is self-limiting, which means it will resolve without treatment. Without treatment, ringworm takes about three months to resolve. In other words, just because you think a treatment cured ringworm doesn't mean it actually did. To give you an example, last time I had a cold, I ate chocolate. So I could say, well, you know what? I ate chocolate and my cold went away, so chocolate cured my cold. No, that's not what it means. Just because you do one thing and something else happens, it doesn't mean that there's a causal link. And so until you've done a study and you've shown that your treatment works faster than the studied approved treatments, you aren't doing anyone any favors by recommending them. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Both of these things convince YouTube to show this video to more people and get the information to people who need it. Otherwise, have a joyous day.